Didn't sound good. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I know I had a few requests recently about guys uh, wondering how I jack up my car, how I support it when I'm working underneath the car. So today I'm gonna do this quick video that's gonna show you how to lift your 2IS or any IS or any Toyota car or truck or SUV. They basically all use a similar jacking points and similar way to jack it up. So I'll show you guys that today. So before we really get started, uh, this is how to jack the car up using a hydraulic jack or you know one of these jacks I got here. So I've been using my US General Harbor Freight one forever. This thing, I bought it probably for like 80 or 90 dollars. It's actually a piece of crap. I mean, it leaks all the time. I have to put hydraulic or brake fluid in it every time it leaks just to top it off. Uh, so I don't really trust it to hold up anything. I trust it to jack up, but after I jack it up, I put in jack stands. So uh, I would not really recommend this, but all these hydro jacks that I've ever used, they end up leaking. I've got like a hybrid steel aluminum one from Craftsman, and that one leaks also. So it's just kind of the nature of the beast. Uh, these things, uh, you know, the seals inside are crap. They're China crap anyway. Yeah, they don't really hold up over time. Uh, I know some people have uh, had good reviews or good uh, experience with uh, Harbor Freight's Daytona line. They sell like a Daytona professional line and it's a steel jack so that thing is heavy as hell. It's hard as hell to lug around but for professional use and something like if you have a shop where you're using it all day and every day, it might be worth it. But you know, for the occasional once or twice a week that I use this one, this is good. I've had it for maybe eight or nine years now. First thing is, you know, jack stands. I've got these, I uh, forgot where I got these. These might have been, for, they're not from Harbor Freight. I think they're from like an auto parts store. I must have gotten them on sale a long time ago. And I also, I also have a set of more heavy duty four ton uh, Craftsman ones here. So these ones I usually use like on the van or if I have to jack the car up higher or I, if I need to jack all four wheels up, I use this one. So, my recent uh, jacking videos for my Sienna and my One IS, I got some few comments about some products that they actually make now that help you jack the seam up. So I ended up picking up two of them just to try out. I've been so used to using my uh, wooden blocks for the last 15 years that I didn't even know stuff like this existed until someone mentioned it in the comments. And I went on Amazon and ordered two of these babies. The first one I ordered was the hockey puck style one where it has a slit in it. It's a pretty heavy duty, you know, it's about twice as thick as a regular hockey puck, so it's perfect for what we do. We don't want to have that failure like that GSF guy. He put two pucks together and then it slipped off and destroyed his door. So this one is perfect for that. So it, you, you basically remove the old rubber one and you put it in there and it fits right inside of there and it doesn't slip out. So if it slips, it'll stay within this little groove of your jack. And then this other one I picked up, this aluminum one with, it actually has magnets and it's got a piece of heavy duty plastic inside that kind of wedges up against there. But the magnetic thing is cool because you can stick it there and it, it sticks to your seam. So this one fits right in the, in, in between two. And these were pretty affordable. I mean, I think this guy was only $11 and this one was a dollar more, 12. I just wanted to try both of them out because they're going to be pretty good tools for me at least because I use both jacks all the time, so having two of them is perfect. You know, one rubber one and then one metal one. I'll test out the, the rubber one for the front right now. And we'll go ahead and stick that on here and find the seam. So on the 2IS, it's not really marked anywhere where the jack point is, but I'll show you guys underneath in a little bit where it is. Uh, on my Sienna, they actually have a little arrow on the side skirt that shows you where the jacking point, point is. Some of the other newer cars may have it, but I know the 2IS doesn't have it.
when you guys jack these cars, you gotta be, make sure you know your clearance between your jack and your fender. You don't want this thing to ever rebound and put a big ass dent in your fender. Uh, luckily, this jack doesn't do that, but some people put like a rubber sleeve or maybe like a, a pool noodle around here just to protect their paint. So getting underneath, you can see where you jack it up from. So you basically look at that seam right there and you'll see the triple bead or the, the triple stamped seam. That's where the factory reinforcement point is in between those two little notches. And that's designed for the factory jack. So now that we're using this puck, we wanna make sure that puck fits right up into that groove. So you basically just jack it up, make sure it's seated into there and you kind of yeah you get it right into and then it as long as it touches the both sides and gets distributes the pressure evenly you're good there so you, you jack it up from there and then back here i always mount my jack stand right on that frame rail that's the reinforced portion of that frame rail and i usually put that piece of wood just so i don't mar up my metal and uh, put any kind of indentations or marks on my metal. I've made the mistake before of trying to jack it up right there where those two little plugs are. That's your floor pan, so you don't want to jack that spot up. That's going to put a big ass dent in there and damage your thing. And then the rest of this frame rail, I don't really recommend mounting anything on that frame rail. And I'll show you guys a little clip from my One IS where I made a mistake even though I was preaching not to put a jack stand on there. So after all that preaching I was doing about not using that frame rail to jack up my car, I ended up doing that on this uh, sport cross when I was pressure cleaning under the car. And uh, look what I did. I bent that frame spot right there where I put the jack stand. I initially had it with the jack and the jack stand, but then I took the jack down to use it on the other side and I screwed this up. It didn't really do much damage. It put an indention from the jack stand right there. On the back side, I'm going to test out this metal one. As I told you guys, it had two magnets on it, so it just sticks to your seam. Kind of let it sit, and then you can just line your jack up and get it in there. As you can see, I put the jack stand right along the little frame rail here. Like I said, I don't recommend when I show you that clip earlier using that frame rail back here. This whole area right here is reinforced on this side because this is basically where they put the two post jack when they're actually in the service shop. That's where they jack it up from. So you gotta make sure that you jack it up from the same area or you put the jack stands in the same area there. I would rather have that jack back here in this area because there's more room to work with. It's just because this jack is so wide that I can't jack up along here and get to that spot. If I jacked it up from like the rear differential or the rear jack center jack point, then I can probably use this side. But since my car's too low and the jack doesn't reach down far enough, I usually never jack it up from the middle back area subframe. So we'll go on the other side and jack this up and. Man, I forgot about the unintended consequence of jacking the rear really high. The front goes above the ground too. Since on these cars you don't ever rotate the tires front and back, I forgot all about that from my Honda days when we used to rotate tires and we just jacked the rear or the front really high and both the whole side goes up. So one thing with working on the rear, you want to put one of these blocks under the wheel right here just because the front doesn't have a parking brake. You have to wedge it with something so the car doesn't roll on you if you get it too high or that there's any kind of rolling you know forward so you want to get that little two by four just to keep it from rolling forward a little bit up here so on this side i'm going to jack it up a little bit differently than on the other side i'm not going to use the frame rail i'm going to actually jack it up from that reinforced spot that way it gives me a little bit more room up here to put that jack stand close to the frame and closer to the back versus the other side so i'm just going to line it up with the reinforcement i'm using the puck on this side just to get it jacked up. Oh. 
So on this side, you can see where I mounted it right here to the reinforcement I was talking about using that puck so that all the weight is on that puck right now. It gives me a little bit more room to mount this guy right here, as you can see right there to the frame rail and it allows me to push it closer to the back of the vehicle so that way it gets a good secure spot no risk of falling down so that's basically how you jack stand the rear hey guys thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video and i hope you guys learned something about jacking these cars up and uh, be careful and safe out there when you're doing this uh, i never uh, jack the car up and get under the car unless i have one jack stand and a jack or two jack stands or maybe a wheel underneath just in case something ever happens because you never know like even with those harbor freight ones that's the where the weld split and that uh, you could potentially cause the car to fall on top of you especially if you're under the car so i always have like two safety points where when i'm jacking up or working under the car so you know just keep that in mind when you're doing this uh i know this this video probably took a lot longer than i expected with me explaining all the little things but i hope you guys learned something from it and if you haven't done so already like the video uh subscribe to the channel if you're new to the channel and you know you're just learning stuff here because i have a bunch of two is uh content a one is content sienna content car content whatever i'm working on that's interesting content anyways uh thanks for watching guys i'll see you guys next time Thank <laughs> you.